Um, so the Zoom directions, you can use the chat for any technical questions. You can use Alt-H to access the chat. Um, and if you have any technical questions about the Zoom or features of the meeting, please use the chat function. Our technical assistant will then attempt to troubleshoot your problem and get back to you. All right, next slide. Um, once we get to the, the question to the questions and listening session portion of the uh, meeting, to indicate that you have a comment, please use Zoom's raise hand feature located at the bottom of the screen. When you raise your hand, it'll alert uh, Bill and I that you'd like to speak, and then we will unmute attendees to, to give their comments and feedback in the order of which they raise their hands. So you can do so by using the raise hand feature or hitting Alt Y on your keyboard. You, if you're on the phone, you can dial star nine. All right, thank you. So um, at this point, I just quickly want to give uh, Michelle, introduce Michelle Styler, or is Jeff Gonville here? It looks like we have Jeff. So I want to introduce Je Jeff Gonville, the deputy director for the MBTA, just to say a few words. All right. Good. Good evening, everybody. And uh, to be honest, thank you. Thank you for uh, for really allowing us to be here tonight. And uh, where we are certainly interested in hearing everyone's feedback. Um, I think, as all of you know, and, and frankly, I'm sure have experienced over the last year, uh, we had a, a period of transition, and uh, with that, uh, a number of uh, really, really, um, frankly, poor performance that we know and we recognize. And um, we have been able to make a number of, of, of changes to get ourselves past some of the issues that we've had, whether they were with our vendors or as, as many of you are aware of the issues that we had with our software and uh, having to transition back to the old software. Um, Michelle has joined the team and uh, I think many of you have had an opportunity to interact or meet Michelle before. If you haven't, I'll, I'll, Michelle will say a few words here in a moment, but she is the, our new lead uh, for the Parachanta division, but she's supported by the entire RIDE team. Just know that we are completely committed here at the T to, to uh, one, one, build back the, the trust uh, in, in that you had that, that with the ride and the ride program. And uh, we, are, we are focused on really continuing to improve the ride. So I think uh, today's meeting is timely and, and I'm optimistic that we're going to hear that you have seen some improvements over the last several months, certainly from where we were. Um, but we can also are here to listen to hear of other areas where we need to continually continue to work to make improvements. So again, you know, Jessica, Bill, and and the rest of of our tag, Elizabeth, uh, thank you for for having us here, and um, and we we uh, are looking forward to tonight's conversation. So thank you, Michelle. Oh, you're on mute, Michelle. Okay, so I just want to say thank you, uh, Jeff, and thank you everyone here for participating. I appreciate your patience as we work through the transition. We have seen significant improvements in on-time performance, a decrease in missed and late trips, and reduced call wait times. But that doesn't mean we're done. Uh, there is a lot to do yet, and I want to encourage you to continue to provide feedback. Uh, we are focused on improving the customer experience and are undergoing a review of our policies and procedures. Uh, we have an in-depth evaluation of the customer complaint process underway, and we've already made some improvements. Uh, I won't speak, I wanna, too much more. I wanna allow you plenty of time for Q&A. We wanna hear everything you have to say. Um, uh, just a, a mention that although it's a couple years away, uh, we're working toward additional improvements in technology and software, and that would offer additional features that we hear customers ask for. And I look forward to future ex exchanges. Thank you for your participation. Thanks, Michelle. All right, so I let's get into it. Um, it's time to hear, we want to hear from everyone and hear how, how everything's going. As Bill said, the good, the bad, in the middle, um, we, we want to hear from, from everyone here. So um, if, if you have a comment, uh, or we ask that you, you, again, you utilize the raise hand feature. Oh, hold on. Uh, sorry, thanks, Karen. Um, we ask that you utilize the raise hand feature 
and that you uh, you can do so by dialing star nine or hitting the raised hand icon on the computer. So it looks like first we have Gina Pitts. How you doing, there's Gina Pitts and Tim Pitts, but Tim Pitts is the writer. Oh, hi, great, oh. thank you. Now, what happens, um, first of all, I'm a dialysis patient and I go three times a week. I'm supposed to be there for a chair at 5.15. I call up and I tell them my chair time is 5.15. They don't come and get me there. So what happens is when I get there, I'm late. So I get there at 5.30. So they get me at 5.30, I'm on the chair quarter to six. Now, I'm supposed to run three and a half hours. Because they get me there late, they still come on, on, come on time. So now my phone is ringing, your ride is here, and you should be ready. But I still got an hour and a half left on my time because you got me there late. Hello? They're listening. Wait. I don't know. Wait. Thank you for your, your feedback. Um, so so now, before, I, before you answer my question, then the other half of it is, I don't know if they do surveys or check. Um, I use a cane and I could use a small vehicle. They keep sending me the biggest thing you got for one person. And I'm like, huh? That's where do you live? Have. Where do you live, sir? I live on Cummins Highway. I live on Corman Road off Mattapia. of Cummins Highway. In Rosalind Dale, then. Mattapia. Yeah, okay. yeah, sorry. So you head east off of, yeah, okay. I get who? Nothing. No, I I, I know Cummins Highway. I'm just wondering which side of Hyde Park to have you on. Okay. I'm over by Cody, Cody Ford, the new building. Okay. And also, too, that when they come late, they'll they'll call and say they're in Newton. You can't get from Newton for 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 five for five fifteen pickup if they're in Newton. No, where was he? No, that happens. That happens a lot. Or they'll they'll come to they'll go to Carney Hospital and say where is he? Well, you need to come to Mattapan and pick him up. They're in Carney Hospital sometimes waiting for him when they should be in Mattapan. Thank you. So we, we are taking note of all of these questions. Uh, and I don't want to jump in after every question. There's an opportunity maybe at the back end uh, for us to address a couple of the issues. But what I'd like to do is take note of all the issues that you're identifying and mm -hmm. not respond to everything individually and then follow up with you. Thank okay. you. Appreciate Thank that. Thank you for your comments. Thank mm -hmm. you, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. That's Michelle. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now I'm mute. Um, next, I'm going to call on uh, Jacqueline Gifford. Oh, hold on, Jacqueline, you're on mute. Is that better? Much better. Thanks. Great. Um, thank you for the opportunity uh, to uh, to voice some concerns. Um, I have a very specific concern, not so much to me but just about process. So right now, as it stands, if there's a problem that a ride encounters um, with a service, the only avenue that seems to work um, is email. And unfortunately, my experience, and I probably other people could, could say the same thing, is that email is not timely. So if you have an issue um, that needs immediate assistance or, you know, something more than just a general broader kind of issue. Email is not the way to go. And it's truthfully disconcerting to me, particularly with our population, that there is not 
some other mechanism to be able to give immediate feedback for even simple, not simple, but complicated things, such as what the gentleman just before me spoke about. So I'm not trying to you know, throw any shade on anybody. I know everybody's doing the best that they can do. But on my wish list of things at the ride, more so than being on time and getting people where they need to go, would be a much more uh, thoughtful, um, responsive response to when things happen. Because nobody, whether we're in a wheelchair, walking, or, or able-bodied, um, want to feel like um, what we are dealing with is, is lesser than maybe what other people are experiencing. And I don't think intentionally that's the attitude that the T wants to give, but I'm telling you, that's why you've got 82 people here today, <laughs> because that is the perception. May not be the reality, but it is the perception. That's all I had to say. Thank you for listening. Where, where you, you don't have to answer, Jacqueline. I just, but I'm curious where people live, just to get a sense of who. Sure. So I live in I live in Norwood, okay. and um, I work I work in the city. I also I work from home. Um, my experience with the ride is is not unusual it's you know it's a challenge it's really a challenge and um you know just when i think i sort of have figured out um maybe how to how to maneuver things you know things change so um but i'm i'm fortunate much more so probably than a lot of folks that i don't have to rely on the ride for for everything uh for my transportation needs because if i did your phones would all be blowing up every day. <laughs> so thank, so you, thank for, you. Th thank you for sharing that. If people want to offer where they live, it's just helpful. It gives a no, bit of a background to everything, but you're no. under no obligation whatsoever. Not a problem. Thank you. Hey, um, Jane, Mc, I'm just gonna try and say this correctly. McNerney, did I get it? We're just trying um, to unmute you. There you go. Okay. Um, McInerney. McInerney. MC, bef Ma MC before and vowel pronounced Mac. Mac. Um, McInerney. Got it. Yep. Thank you for being here. I live in uh, Dorchester Lower Mills. And um, I noticed that there definitely has been some improvement. Um, but there's certainly a lot more room to go. I can't say enough about the drivers that I've worked with. I think that they are all wonderful. I think that there's an incredible disconnect between the drivers and um, dispatch. I um, recently went to the museum of MFA. I gave the address to be dropped off at, I was dropped off. And then I was uh, to be I assumed I was going to be picked up at the same address. Uh, I was waiting, and um, the driver wasn't there. So dispatch, some whoever is called, somebody called me to try to um, find out where I was and how to meet up, match us up. I wasn't able to take the call immediately, so I called right back. And then I get into this, I don't know where I am. I finally talked to someone who says, uh, well, hopefully, okay, I'll post that and hopefully they'll see it. Like they can't talk immediately to the driver to say she's at this entrance and you're at the other entrance. They can't communicate with the driver immediately. That's very confusing to me. And with that, I uh, that's the end of my question. Thank you so much. Uh, Peter. Hey, thanks for the opportunity. Um, I'm Hold Peter. On, I just have to add, uh, spotlight you. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. We're all set. Hi, uh, my name's Peter. Um, I'm a <clears throat> I'm a Eurasian male. I'm wearing a yellow and blue sweater. I'm in a we reclinable wheelchair, which is really pretty long. 
Um, I want to first of all comment. I just have a couple of really quick comments. One is on the gentleman who was going to dialysis. I'd like to know if in the future the ride, it seems to me, should be able to, if they get someone there late for a medical appointment, there should be a way for dispatch to say, okay, we got them there late. Let's give them, you know, an extra half hour or whatever time it is they need to finish their appointment because it wasn't their fault that, that they were late. It was um, the transportation's fault. So I think that's something that should be considered. Um, the other thing is on what uh, Jane just said, it is, and I, I've been in the same situation. It's not right that the drivers cannot communicate with dispatch. Everything's through the drivers punching in and sending a message and dispatch taking. And I've said this before at another meeting, sometimes a half hour to an hour to get back to the driver. It's just not right. It's not good use of the driver's time. It's not fair to passengers on board, especially when they're, they wanna get home or to wherever they're going just as much as the next person. It's, it's just not efficient to say, okay, driver, you can't call us, just send us a message and we'll get to you when we can. That's just not a good way to run a business. And I've said that before. It's all those, it, and the other thing I've said before, and I wanna reiterate, it's imperative that passengers have the ability to speak directly to the dispatcher when it concerns either a late ride or, you know, there's an issue with um, the ride itself. In my case, an issue has been because of the size of my wheelchair and the new vans are now smaller because the front seats don't come out so you can't fit two wheelchairs in there with me. You know, there has to be a way for me to communicate to the dispatch and dispatch has to be open enough instead of saying, well, send the drive, the driver's gonna go and if he can't fit, he'll tell us he can't fit the person. That It's a waste of the driver's time, it's a waste of, my time as a passenger, it's not my fault that the T purchased vans that don't accommodate a, a long wheelchair and mine is long and Bill Henning can attest to that. <laughs> Peter, so, where do you live? I, I believe, I thought I said that. I live in Newton Highlands. Oh yeah, maybe you did, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. But those I think are important and valid points. And I think the T needs to, take a real hard look at it, especially if in the case of someone on dialysis, that's just not right. You can't expect the guy to jump off the machine. He's got an hour and a half left. So. Thanks, Peter. Yep. Thank you, Peter. Um, next, we're gonna, um, before we uh, call in the next person, I see that they're all, um, here, I want to quickly recognize um, some some key folks from the RTAG group that are here tonight. Um, first is uh, Elizabeth Foster, who's RTAG's executive board chair. Uh, Elizabeth, do you quickly want to just say hi? I'm just, I'm hi, sure. Stuff. Yeah, I'm Elizabeth Foster. I am the chair of the RTAG board, and I am very glad to be here with y'all tonight and that we're having this forum. Thank you. Um, and then I also wanted to recognize our ride um, subcommittee co-chairs who have been meeting with the ride on a weekly and then more recently a bi-weekly basis working through issues uh, after that uh, software transition. Um, so Elizabeth Dean Clower and David Kingsbury, are you, are you guys here? I see Elizabeth, you wanna quickly just say hi? Hi, I'm Elizabeth Dean Clower. Um, I'm a white woman with salt and pepper hair and glasses. Um, today I'm having to use um, just a static photo of myself, but I will be um, listening in for the entire session. Um, I just want to reiterate what Bill and others have said that we really welcome this as an opportunity for you to share your experiences um, and um, in, in all realms that 
um, as Bill uh, had said, um, what has gone well, what hasn't gone well, where you see there needs to be improvement because it's really um, your voices that help direct, you know, the policies change. There have been changes, particularly with, um, you know, Michelle has taken, um, Michelle ta Steeler has taken a very active interest in wanting to um, make um, continued incremental improvements as well as address hot button issues. Um, and so we really do want to encourage you um, uh, in this forum or um, if, if uh, um, otherwise um, to please be in touch with us and we'll be, um, you'll be getting information at the end of the session again on how to do that. So welcome again. Um, and then David Kingsbury, I saw you were here. I just can't find your screen. David? Okay, well, um, to, we'll come back to him um, later. But David is, and Elizabeth uh, Dean Clower are the RIDE subcommittee co chairs who have been meeting with the RIDE quite frequently, working through lots of these issues. Um, okay, so now we'll continue on with our feedback session. Um, Sandy Novak. Um, hi, I live in Brooklyn. Um, I had two great drivers today for my trip to Mass Ioneer. Um, unlike many drivers who don't necessarily drive very smoothly, uh, these were two drivers who I would be happy to be in their vehicle again. They were nice and smooth. So um, I don't know if they're both new hires that I've never seen either before or what, but um, yeah, I, I would, uh, if I had a grade them, I'd say uh, a very high mark for driving. Um, the driver though, who uh, came for me to take me back home, um, did, did leave me uh, kind of reeling in one way though. Um, he asked me, do I need the lift? And I said, uh, yes, uh, this was the van. And I said, yes, I booked the lift. And um, then he said to me that, what, I, I can't even climb the few stairs? And that kind of took me aback because there I am standing with my rollator walker and I have leg braces that kind of protrude from my pant legs. And um, I really didn't say anything because um, that kind of really took me aback. I got onto the lift and then I moved um, into my seat and um, I was looking around for the seatbelt and he said, don't you see your seatbelt? You're sitting on it. And at that point, I just said, you know, you're picking me up at mass eye and ear. So no, no, I don't see my seatbelt. And at that point, he started laughing. He indicated he was just joshing me. And um, he said, you're OK. And, um, and we got along fine afterwards. Um, but supposing these two people I had today were brand new drivers, like I said, they get excellent grades for driving, but maybe in training, um, you could say that whereas most of us probably have great senses of humor, including me, um, it's kind of cruel to make comments about somebody's disability when you don't even know them, so it's not even a friend you know, saying uh, some other comment to a friend in jest or something, but it's somebody you can't really read because you don't know them. And um, uh, uh, yeah, because I found it very disturbing when he said those comments. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, I'm going to call on uh, Joanne Chambers, I know you were trying to raise your hand, and so you, I have you next in, in the queue. I'm sorry, I'm not. 
Technically, you know, how to work. Savvy? Come on. You got it. You got it. The angels got me. But this, I, I don't have the ride. But this is this is what I wanted to say. I want, I need the ride. But the process in getting the ride, I, I was trying. And I, it failed because they, you call them up. So you tell them you want the ride, you know, and they took those questions. Then they send something to the doctor, I guess. And then he don't get it. He don't fill it out. So then I got a letter saying, you know, they didn't get it. So I have to start all over. But when I made, I was, had an appointment with the doctor, like a couple of months later. And I was telling him, I said, why don't you argue with him? Why don't you send the paper back? You know, you know, blah, blah, blah. He said, Joey, and listen, those papers come in. I'm busy. He said, we don't have uh, like, a, a, I don't have a secretary or a nurse anymore. I'm just doing everything myself. He said, I didn't even get the paper till so late. And I, if you had brought it in or something, maybe I could have filled it out. And that was, so that's a problem of uh, getting the, you know, paper to the doctor. And another thing, if you said, I'm 77, you shouldn't have to go through so much to get the ride. If when, one day you get 77, let me tell you, you got all kind of ailments and everything is going on. My back bothers me. I can't stand no more than 15 minutes. One of my legs is longer than the other. I got all kind of problems and just waiting on, and I, and I love the tea, trust me. And I wait on but, and then I can't afford Uber, those rides. So I really want the ride, but it's getting the ride. If I could get the ride, you know, the process to get it is a problem. But they should have some age limit that you should be automatic. We're old. We should automatically be, that should be something given to us. Without going through a broke, you don't have to be in a wheelchair and everything. At a certain age, I remember when my husband was living, he was 90. They called me to bring him in. And I go, I can't bring him in now because 90 years old, they send somebody here to pick me up to bring me the mass out for some kind of test. He was 90. He couldn't get on the bus. He wouldn't even know where the bus was. So those little things that they have to consider, we are seniors. The ride has to, you know, give us a chance let us have the ride. We will pay. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. Um, I'm going to try to pronounce your name the best as I can. Next is uh, Waka Ezui. Shukuka Ezui. You go as it's right. spelled. Just as it, so it's it's not a trick. You have to just sound it out. <laughs> <laughs> no, it just goes as the spelling goes. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, I have two quick points. I do not know if it's appropriate to um, comment on right flex. If it is, I Absolutely. if it's if it is part of what we're doing, and I just want to say. What a wonderful program that Right Flex is the best thing that has happened to the right system. There is nothing satisfying or makes one happier than knowing that you can get up and go. That when you need it, you can go when it's available. The only drawback is the number of... Uh, right you are assigned within a month and mine was uh, has never been enough <laughs> there was a time i was getting only two then i started getting only four and now i get up to 10 it's still not enough and i wish I, uh, uh, we can have more um, allocated to us per month that's about right flex it's a wonderful program i enjoy it and it is the best. My second point is on the regular ride, when a driver can get hold of the dispatcher, and the problem is you are on board and the driver stops to pick another passenger, rings the bell, 
The passenger is not there, no response. And the driver can't leave because he has to get attention of the drive of the dispatcher before he can take off. And he's radioing the dispatcher for a, a release and he's getting no answer. And you sit there, the passenger sits there, the driver sits there for a while because the driver can leave because the dispatcher hasn't said leave. Is there any way to enhance the communication between the driver and the dispatcher so that we don't have to sit somewhere unnecessarily when you can get hold of the next passenger. Thank you very much for your help. Uh, it's been great. And sir, where do you live? I live in Malden. Okay, thank you. Thank you. It's helpful feedback. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, I want uh, Maria Matos. Mm -hmm. There, Maria. Maria? Maybe we can uh, go to the next person and go back to her. Yep, Maria will loop. Sorry, okay. I will just try to unmute myself. There you go. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, I live in Boston, South End. My name is Maria Matos. Um, the complaint, I have a little complaint, but uh, I never complained for the right before because always they've been wonderful to me, very good. Um, so two days ago, I ordered the right because my sister is here with me and she's sick. Um, I ordered the right to go to downtown uh, appointment and we have an appointment at 10.30. So the right to get here at 10.15, when they get here, they, they cannot take us, both of us, to wheelchair. I've been on the right with a five wheelchair together. But because of the pandemic, I understand they can take a lot of people. And I bring one PCA in both of us in the wheelchair. I have a power chair, so she have a manual chair. And I need PCA to drive her. So the driver called the dispatch as the two people already complain about the driver cannot connect with dispatch. And we wait, we wait, we wait, we wait for a long time and the dispatch cannot connect with the driver. And the, the driver have to go because his time for another pickup is already in. And I feel like the 15 minutes for them is, is to other um, consumer is like too short, the distance, even if it close, because he have to drop me off and we, with the wheelchair to go. And he and the, the driver, after he left the car, oh, he can go. He can take us because I, when I call the first one, I call the day before I call and I let them know. I need um, van because I take it. Uh, we two wheelchair, one is a power wheelchair. We three person, one is a power wheelchair, one is a PCA and the other one is manual chair. Very clear because when you call the right, they ask you, how many people go? And it's very clear when the driver come in here, oh, I can't take you because two person or three person or four person. We already clarify the date when we call. And I call again a second. So that day they don't take me. They take hours to clarify between the driver and dispatcher keep calling me when I come home two or three times to give me satisfaction. I don't need satisfaction. If you can work, you can clarify, would you, oh, he have to go listen to the, my call when I call. I say, go ahead, okay? And I say, okay, 
I appreciate you can call me back, you give me satisfaction, okay. But I call again to make an appointment to very clear and to tell them it's three or two person. And today when they get here, they tell me, I can't take you again. So I don't understand what we need to do if we have more than one person. And also, if the driver cannot get with the dispatch, to, not to call to verify right away. Because the appointment, when we get there, if we late 10 minutes, they tell us we well, have to make another day to appointment. So thank you. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. Important input. Thank you. Good to hear from you. You too, Bill. Yes, Maria, it's been it's been a while. I um, know. <laughs> I say that jokingly because I think I just talked to you last week. Um next, uh Gina uh uh Quintania. Yeah, hi, uh, this is Gina Quintanilla. Quintanilla. Um, yes, <laughs> it's a tough one. No worries. Um Thank you for the opportunity to speak. This is my first time speaking at, at one of these. Um, I've been a, a ride passenger since the early 90s. And it's really sad for me to hear that the same exact problems that happened back then are, are still happening. Um, I primarily use the, uh, the ride um, on demand program. So I don't have to take the regular ride often. Um, I, I, on occasion, I take it still but it still has the same problems everything that i'm hearing uh, i can relate to um the um if, you know i've experienced everything that i've heard people say right now i've missed doctor's appointments that took me months and months to get with specialists and only to get there late and the doctor wouldn't see me and i had to reschedule for eight or nine months more um I actually had a job that I was told if I was late one more time, I would be fired. I ended up quitting that job because of the ride. Um, the ride has had problems going back a long time. And to hear that you're having problems again, um, it, just, it, just, it just seems like a never ending thing. And um, I do see the, the um, I wanna say though, the on-demand program has been wonderful. I, um, again, I echo the other gentleman the ride flex or whatever you want to call it now has been a wonderful program. Um, it, it's, it's, it's really allowed me to be um, independent and be able to go when I need to go, not when they have an opening and not get to where I'm going late and not miss appointments and, and not jeopardize my work. Um, so it's been, it's a wonderful program. I can't um, recommend it enough. The only thing is that the, um, uh, the, the, the people at the ride um, reservations don't seem to know anything about it because when I call them, they all tell me, uh, you know, you can call them five times and get five different um, responses. And most of them say that there's no such thing as an on demand. And um, I, so I, I want to speak, I'm calling uh, because recently a friend of mine who's also a ride passenger who has Alzheimer's, she has memory issues. She's in the early stages, but she, sorry, she calls she calls the ride all the time for guidance and is given misinformation all the time. So I always have to call, I always have to rescue her because she calls them and and when she you know she has their on demand program and she calls the wrong number and they tell her that she can't call on demand. That, that they don't, it doesn't work that way. And then she, they get her to be further confused. I've emailed the email. I, again, I echo what someone said, the uh, contacting by email is not very efficient. I've contacted them numerous times to try to, to, to assist my friend with memory issues. And instead, instead of responding to me, they respond to her and she doesn't understand. So, um, and, and I'm going to get to the, um, I'm almost done. Um, but recently uh, she was on the Lyft concierge program with the Ride Flex program. So she could just call a telephone number and they would dispatch for her. Well, without any warning or notice, 
they pulled the plug on the concierge program. I called the concierge program. They said the MBTA pulled the plug with, with no notice to them either. And so a lot of people who, who relied on that phone number to call and say, hey, I need to go to Mass General, or I need to go here or there, now could no longer do that. Um, and they, they have, so now they've had to go back to using the regular ride and, and having further complicating things. So I, 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 would, I would hope that like in future, if these, these changes are gonna happen, like gonna discontinue something like the concierge program, that you should really give the passengers notice that you're you're canceling it. Um, say, hey, you know, on this date we're going to cancel it. Not so that they call and just say, hey, we don't have that anymore. Sorry, we can't help you. And now they're abandoned, literally abandoned. I think that's terrible. So my friend can't really express this herself. Like I said, she has her own she um, she her issues with her memory. And, and she, life is challenging and you, ride didn't need to make it more challenging. Um, just as the woman who's 77, um, the, the process to get the ride shouldn't be so complicated. Uh, they, they need to really revamp a lot of things. Um, I, I, um, so I just hope that you'll consider all these things that they're saying. Um, but again, I do say that the on-demand program has been wonderful. I wish that more people would, would be able to learn about it. And if you would be able to provide a concierge type program um, for the Uber passengers, not just the Lyft or to maybe the Lyft again, because I guess that doesn't exist anymore. Um, but the, the ride reservationists, I, I'm not sure how that's working. I'm able to use my own app and, and use my own on demand and not rely on them. But I can, I, I have, I can only imagine um, as I said, when I call the ride a reservationist, they give me misinformation all the time and they don't seem to be know what they're doing. So um, definitely some better training, definitely some more sensitivity training. A, a lot of the things I've, I've heard, I echo. And, mm -hmm. and I'm in Burlington, Massachusetts. And as I said, I've been a ride passenger for, for a long time. My ride ID only has five numbers. Most people I know has six or more. Um, I've been, and, and I, I'm, I'm sad, I've seen the ride be, be good and I've seen it bad, but it's, it's probably the worst it's ever been now. And that's really sad. And I hope they can, you guys can improve it because we, so many of us rely on it for everything, for getting our food, to working, to, to going to the doctors, to keep our health up, to, to visiting our family and friends. It's so important. It's, it's, it's not a luxury, it's a necessity. So thank you for your time. I'd like to just jump in real quick. Most everything will wait to the end, but I want to clarify that the Lyft concierge- oh, Can you just wait till we spotlight you? There you go. Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. I, I just would like to clarify that the Lyft concierge program was not canceled. Mm -hmm. Lyft changed their vendor. We provided a month's notice uh, and the program still exists. The number oh, has changed, good. but the, the program still exists. So how does my friend get that? Because she she was she said she was never no, notified of any such change. Uh, so we we can con we can provide that information. We can share it with you. Okay, so um, I'll see if I can get something posted in the comments. Are you on the phone? I'm I'm on my iPhone, but I I can't uh, access the comments. I, I okay, just, we'll get your contact information. We'll get something to you today. Okay. Um. So yeah, because when I call the regular number to try to get assistance, um, nobody knows what I'm talking about. I, I spoke to a supervisor who said she's been with the ride for 10 years and she didn't know anything about this on-demand program. So it's it's very frustrating. So thank, um, you, thank you. Thank you, Gina. Um, next, we have uh, Alan Bravo. Hi, uh, thank you. My name is Naeem and I live in Dorchester. Like so many others, my main concerns really center around communication. Um, there's two main things I'd like to highlight. Um, the first being um, in the way that we're notified that our ride is coming or arriving or that something has happened. Um, I will often have the call come in that the ride will be here in 10 minutes. 
I wait and I wait and I wait and 20 minutes pass and I call the ride and I'm told you don't have a vehicle assigned to you. And on the inverse of that, on the complete opposite side of that, I have been marked as a no-show or almost missed my ride um, because the call that the ride will be shortly arriving does not come in at all or it comes in literally as the driver is pulling up. So there is absolutely no good communicating um, with the passenger as to what the status of the vehicle is and um, it's not sustainable. And then the other piece is uh, often when the ride does come, so I am I am a blind uh, user um, and the ride drivers will come up without identifying themselves and they will insist on asking me for my full name and the address to where I am going. As a blind person, I cannot tell that they are in uniform. I cannot see the vehicle and see that it has a number. I am, uh, I present as a woman. And so I am concerned for my safety when often a complete stranger walks up to me and demands this personal information. There needs to be better communicating. How do I know that they are indeed a ride driver and they are looking for me when that no information about them is is they don't provide any information about themselves to me whether that's like i don't know ahead of time the name of the driver that's picking me up the driver doesn't provide their vehicle number when they pull up and so i'm just concerned for my safety often so um yeah thank you thank you very much um next uh shirley Okay, I'm here. Hi. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay. Um, I'm so confused because I'm listening to all the callers calling in about the ride and the on-demand concierge and lift. And um, my question was regarding for the lift. And um, so that program I'm hearing now is not canceled. Um, my question is, um, I'm a blind, um, I'm a blind rider. Um, I live in. I live in um, Boston, Copley area, and um, I feel hesitant on applying for the ride lift program because um, I need door-to-door -door service, and I know that those um, people, the drivers, they don't give you door-to-door -door service where they would come to the door and call out my name, or when they drop me off, they would need to drop me off you know, in the building of where I'm going. Otherwise, if they left me at curbside, I wouldn't know where to go. So my question is, will there be training in the future for the Lyft drivers that are um, participating in the ride program, um, be trained to accommodate people with disabilities, such as, you know, blind persons that would need door-to-door -door service? Thank you, Shirley. Okay, so yes. So those those are my questions. I just I just you know I really would like to um to apply and um, get services with the lift since it's more um you know on demand type thing where I can call at random in case I have an emergency appointment. But if um they don't provide the door to door service, I I can't use them because I can't be left in the middle of you know you know on the on the sidewalk and not know where to go from there. So, you know, that that's one of my my issues. Okay, thank you. Thank you. It's similar to the um, previous comment uh, from Dorchester. And just in case anyone has recently joined tonight's um, forum, um, we will allow Michelle from the ride who oversees the ride for the T to speak at the end generally on systemic issues and there are, they will uh, connect with anybody individually or try to on these individual concerns. So I just want people to know that there is a real, uh, there can be an afterlife after th this specific forum and the questions you raise, they're not going into a vacuum rest it, it, Okay, am I still on? Can you still yes. hear me? Um, I just want to comment that the ride drivers, they're, they're wonderful, um, unlike the other um, person that just spoke. I don't have a problem with the drivers coming. They come in and they call out my name 
So I know they're there and then they ask where I'm going. Then the other thing is when, when you know, so when they come to pick me up, they'll call out, I'll, I'll always be waiting in the door for them because I depend on that call um, to tell me that they'll be here. And I'm always downstairs at my destinated time, 10 minutes before, just in case. And um, they will come into the door and they will call my name out before they ask, you know, if, you know, if where I'm going. And then when they come pick me up, they would do the same. So I, I just want to comment that all the ride drivers, they're wonderful and they've been very helpful and accommodating. And thanks again for, for being available to us for this meeting too. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I'm done. <laughs> that's, that's, that's helpful. Thank you, Shirley. Um, next, uh, Tom Gilbert. Hold on, Tom, you're muted. There you go. Um, you gotta accept it. Hi, everybody hear me okay? Hi, this is a question for uh, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Um, could you confirm that uh, did, did did Lyft open up a new uh, call center in, in the Boston area? Because my friend Michael wanted to know whether they did or not, because he's having a much better luck now in in getting rides with Lyft now, since since he no longer has to talk to the center in in uh, Virginia. I was wondering if you knew anything about that, as far as whether they opened up a new one in Boston. <laughs> I had mentioned earlier that they, they changed the service uh, and we, we can speak to that at, at the end. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. My, 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 friend, my friend's saying he's having better luck now. So I just wanted to have some confirmation that it looks like things are looking up now that the, the necessary change, changes are being made and everything. Thank you, Tom. I'll speak to that at the end. Thank you. Okay, that sounds good. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Yeah. Um, all right, next, uh, Elizabeth Beanflower. Yes, thank you. Can you hear me? We can, yes. Um, yes, a couple of comments um, and then um, perhaps a question, but certainly different comments. In my, on my own experience, using a combination of the ride lift vans and um, the ride flex program has gone very smoothly lately. Um, I'm not using uh, a great number of trips, but my own on time, oh, and I, I meant to say, I live in Boston Back Bay. So I'd have to say there's been a very notable improvement, particularly with the ride bands of on-time performance in, in my own personal case. However, there are other people who live in the same general vicinity of recognizably downtown Boston as their starting out points and so not outliers. And unfortunately, I'm here to report that just few, two days ago, I found out um, that someone in my um, network has really had um, an atrocious situation with the ride of six weeks ago, waiting four hours for a ride, then a month ago, three hours, and last week, um, two hours. So although these are going in a better direction, but these are so, you know, it really is inhumane to expect anyone with um, normal, you know, bathroom needs and whatever to be stranded somewhere. And I would have brought it up in other meetings, but it literally just came to my attention. So I do want to let you know that I guess what we're hearing both tonight, both from in this forum and um, on the side is that um, even in the same geographic pickup and drop off areas, there's really a wide disparity of um, experience. And this is somebody who, for a combination of reasons, including medical among others, I don't think is gonna be comfortable with or, or, or suitable, whatever, is, is gonna be a, a good, is gonna feel comfortable with um, the ride flex option without door to door service. And also I wanted to say, so I can offer this person um, also your reassurance that uh, this person hasn't felt comfortable filing complaints because of concern of retribution. And I tried to say that, you know, that's not an issue, but even at this point, I mean, she would not be, you know, people would not be penalized for needing to complain, especially for something that's that, you know, um, that 
you know, far out in time. And for someone who identified most of these as medically related appointments, because to state what I think we all know from anyone's personal experience is that with at these clinics that they're they're booked each, you know, each slot. And some of them you can have a computer that if you're 15 minutes late, will just, you know, uh, take you out of the system. In other cases, recognizing historically the ride has had problems, they will try to fit you in at the end of a session, which might mean waiting, you know, a couple of hours on site if they're able to fit you in. And as you're also hearing with things that have to do with any element of a same day procedure, it's just in some cases it's an option, but it's going to run late. In other cases, it's just not an option. And so I feel that um, I both want to commend what has been improving um, for some of us, but also just flag that in some cases um, uh, that, that the outlay, the, these prolonged wait times are really still way, way beyond what's acceptable. But that I, I know that we're trying to, um, our tag is trying to, you know, work with uh, um, OTA, with Michelle and her group and the MBTA to improve it. That I know that that's the goal, and there have been some improvements. But that's the reality of the the, the range of experiences. Thank you, Jessica. Is it all right if I quickly respond to this? If that's if that's okay, I'll let you. Give us yes, it is, Jeff. I'm sorry, That's okay. Jeff. Yes, absolutely. Just give us a second to spotlight you. Sure. Sorry, I was muted. All right, it looks like I'm spotlighted. So, Elizabeth, how how are you? Um, Good, thanks. I, I just want to respond respond back to this. And I think I think you know this from some of our our regular meetings that we've been having. But um, the any trip that it is as long as you describe right now, I want to be very clear is unacceptable. And first off, everyone, it is incredibly difficult for me and I imagine members of the ride team right now to stay silent as people are speaking because I think we want to just jump in and explain and have a further conversation with each of you on each of these issues. So I know Michelle will be wrapping up at, at the end, but Bill, uh, Bill is absolutely right. We are taking notes. I'm taking notes and um, you know we plan on following up and some of you will follow up with individually. But just, just as a matter of what Elizabeth just said, that is absolutely unacceptable and it's an unacceptable state. I myself, I am in charge of all operations at the MBTA. So that's not only just the ride, but it's, it's, it's the buses, it's the rail system, it's the commuter rail system, it's the boats and all the support departments to go along with that. But every day, twice a day, I get an update from Michelle and the team on those trips that are that, are th that, are that unacceptable condition, how many we had and who they were. And we also talk through who's going to be a member of the ride team themselves, reach out to those individuals to explain to them what happened and what we're going to do to make sure it doesn't happen again. So I want to make sure that everyone here knows very clearly that that is not acceptable. Um, and it is something, as, as Elizabeth said, that, that uh, we are working through and that very, does not happen often, but it is an unacceptable state. But I just I, 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 I couldn't let that, that go without realizing and making it clear that we at a very senior level in the organization have made it very clear to our vendors that it's unacceptable and that we have full visibility twice a day, at least at my level, twice a day. Michelle gets it for more, more detail than that on when those, those, those situations are occurring or even as they are occurring. Um, so I figured it was worth to, to take a moment to explain that. And and again, it's, a, it's a incredibly difficult to sit here and hear everyone speak and, and, and talking about your, 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 your concerns, your issues, and not being able to respond to each one of you individually. I know that we're doing that for the sake of just getting everyone's feedback, because I think what we've heard from some of these prior listening sessions is that we spend too much time gabbing, as I'm doing right now, and, uh, and I'll stop, but, but just know that uh, we're taking notes and that uh, we're really interested in your feedback and we will we will do our best to get back in touch with you. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you, Bill. I'm just gonna add two more sentences that there should never be any Hold on, fear. Michelle, for us to spotlight you. Hold on, okay. sorry, just for access purposes. Go ahead. There should never be anyone that, that fears retaliation or repercussions for submitting a complaint. Uh, number one, and with regard to excessively late trips, I myself made two of those phone calls over the last two weeks uh, and spent 
a half an hour on the phone with one of the customers. We take it very personally and to Jeff's point, it hurts listening to some of this and, and we will do better. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, okay. Uh, looks like next is uh, Vinoid Kuala. Hi, can you hear me? We can hear you, yes. Okay, thank you for taking me. Well, you know, even though the ride and the flex program, a lot of things have been sorted out, but a couple of few things I like to mention, which I have experienced and also instead of the ride when we are allotted the flex, uh, the Uber or the uh, other one. So what happened sometime due to some problems, like, you know, one time we were, we went to a restaurant and, and with my friend, she was to be picked up, but that street, somehow there was problem on that street, the street was closed. And we do not have any direct communication with the driver of the, you know, uh, Flex uh, Uber. And it was difficult for the driver to come and communicate. And then we have to call the uh, customer service. And it was a little late at evening, 7.30. It takes nearly 45 minutes for somebody to answer because we do not. And then somehow they have to connect to them and tell the driver, to come and it was to come on another street because that street was closed. But it takes a lot of time to communicate with the you know, customer service. That takes a lot of time to answer the call later in the evening. So another time when I was taking the flex, it was to pick me up. It did not come on time. I tried to connect with them. And then in the meantime, I got a message that had been canceled. And then somehow I connect with the customer service and then they book another one. And then it takes another 20 minutes, 30 minutes for that flex to come. So we do not have a direct communication with the driver or some way. We have to go through the customer service and uh, the time is wasted and, and we have problems in that way. Even though when we have our own, we book our own Uber or something, then we have a direct communication with them. So this is causing a lot of problems with the people who are using when we book the ride and they send the flags. So this is the main concern which I'm having at this time. Thank you very much. And Another thing was one Go time ahead. when I was booking the ride, I especially tell them I don't want flex. I want the regular ride because there was a location where I, because being totally blind, I needed the help of the, you know, driver to, you know, to come to the lobby and come out because we cannot see the car and it was later in the night, but they still book the flags for me. Hey, thank you. So very much. that is what I want to say. And uh, we need to improve upon this, how that can be done. And thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you. You might have said it and I might have missed it, but where do you live? Hello. Hi, yes. Where do you live, sir? Oh my God. We can hear you. What has happened? Oh. It's okay. It's okay. Um, next, uh, Jennifer, Jennifer Smith Workman. Hello. Hello, Jennifer. <laughs> I have a comment um, and a question regarding grouping. I am, you know, I'm the entertainment person. I love my bingo. And I go to bingo with people that live literally around the corner, a quarter of a mile. Everybody's in the same vicinity. So my question is why are we being 
book with someone who is living in Mattapan to come from Quincy to go to Mattapan instead of all of us being on the same vehicle going. I mean, it's been it's been like this before. We've been all dropped off. It's like Elm Hill, Elm Hill Ave, Carlisle. I'm in the Dorchester Roxbury area. I, I don't understand how the grouping is doing when it comes to drop-offs, pickups and drop-offs. Can someone explain to me how bizarre Thanks, the grouping Jennifer. is? Thanks, Jennifer. Um, just uh, for folks that might've hopped on late at the end, um, Michelle will have an opportunity to um, answer some of these questions and, and we'll follow up with other folks um, individually as well. So um, we will get back to you, Jennifer. Awesome, thank you, know, you. Jennifer, I know you know where to find us. You know, I know. <laughs> I just had to put it out there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, uh, Donna Bowen. Donna, are you there? Hi, yes. I'm, yes, I'm sorry. I'm still here. Um, actually, I'm here with my um, visually impaired um, uncle, um, so he's going to speak. Okay. And what's your hey, how are you doing? My name is Johnny. Okay. Uh, my problem with the ride is, like, sometimes when I book it, they never show up. They don't have the decency to call me and tell me, one time I had the procedure, right, at the hospital, they, I had the misstep appointment because they never showed up. Then another time I go to the barbershop, right, I make my appointment for 10 o'clock, they pick me up at 6.30 and I'm totally blind and I have to stand outside and wait for them to open up the shop. So that doesn't make any sense. All right. Thank you very much. Um, and where do you live? What town do you I live, live in? I live in Mattapan. Mattapan. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. Um, next, uh, Gerard Plant. Can you hear me? You can. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, Gerard. Okay, I, I heard Mr. Bonneville say that things would improve and that we take comments seriously. When track started nearly four years ago, the very first weekend I came from Plymouth to South Station. The ride was there, supposed to pick me up at 723 to bring me home to Newton. So I was on the corner, it was August, Lots of traffic, lots of people, because there's tourists, there's visitors. And so there's no way that the ride can miss me. I, I'm always where I need to be so the ride doesn't miss me, no matter what the weather is. I dress for the weather. I was with my PCA. It was 7.23, the sun is still up. So six times I had to call, because each time they would hang up the phone. I only called twice at that, point, at that time in 19 years to get my ride to ensure that I would get home. So there it was right from the get-go. The track is gonna give us trouble. So what happened was my PCA was not comfortable walking up Summer Street to get to Park Street so we could get to the Green Line so I could go home to Riverside Station, which is the last stop going west on the Green Line. Do you know that after that point, it was almost nine o'clock, we were told the ride wouldn't be there until 10 of 10. That's when we left. I got home to my place sooner by taking the Green Line then the ride would have picked me up after the sixth call, being told that after 723 trip turned into 10 of 10, would then pick me up. So now let's go forward now to October 2020 when COVID is burning. Then you only have uh, now a rule where the ride picks you up only, not other people. My ride is there for 423. I'm right there where I need to be at Swalding Rehab out on the Boston Harbor in Charlestown. It was one of those October days where there was a slight cold breeze coming off the ocean and a mist. I was dressed for the weather. But anyway, after two or three calls when 
I had gone out to say, are you here for me? No, I am not here for you. I think he was afraid to pick myself up and the PCA because he, it's, it was COVID at that time, and it was October 2020. And we all know we didn't have vaccines and so on. But we were wearing masks. You know, he came back again. There was nobody there. Nobody in the lobby. No, and I've been there many times over the years since re, uh, SUNY or Spalding, Spalding Rehab opened. I've always seen that area very busy with rides and so on and so forth. So I look around, there's still nobody. He came back again, went under the canopy, and then just took off. That's when me and my PC headed three blocks down the street under mist and a cold breeze to get on the BMZA bus. I go in to Boston. I get out near the police station there, near Franny Hall, get to Park Street and go home. There's nobody on the trolleys at that time, as everybody knows. Once again, that, there we go. So it happened. And so what happened with that situation is that from Charlestown to Newton, did anybody at the MBTA care when I made the formal complaint? I've never made a formal complaint via email. Did anybody care who was in charge that I had gotten home at all from Charlestown? I don't think so, frankly. And I get along with all of the drivers that pick me up. It's not a problem with drivers. It's a problem with scheduling. One man came when I was at blind, uh, in January of this year two BJs over in Waltham. We had to wait 45 minutes. And when the right driver got there, he said that the schedulers called me, told me I need to go to Woburn. Here he was in Waltham or in Watertown. I was in Waltham. He said it would have been easier for him to pick me up, drop me off, and then the other person lives in North Waltham, drop that person off, and then go to Woburn. That's the scheduler's problem. It's always the schedulers, not the drivers. And then... Uh, we have some of the uh, people that we need to call who are the schedulers, schedulers. You have a landmark where you're at. I said, yeah, South Station. I'm at the corner of going back to the uh, August uh, thing four years ago. Uh, yes, I'm at South Station at the corner of Summer Street and Atlantic Avenue. It's only one-way traffic. That's the only thing you can see. You have a landmark. I said South Station. I said, do you know South Station? She said, no, I've never seen South Station. So the experience is in those nearly four years now than that. Some of the schedulers have no, no knowledge of where certain areas are in Boston. So let's go then to now two weeks ago when I'm in Boston for the Disability Summit uh, at Suffolk. My ride's here on time. I go home. Excuse me. I go to 60 Temple Place. So that's, that's my drop-off point when I go down to Boston, no matter what I do in my pickup, because the ride knows the area they go there last. The ride trip to go home, it was a nice day. They had no idea that I was on the schedule. We don't see you. So I decided it's nice out. I'm going home. My PCA was with me. She went her way because she lives in Dorchester. I went my way. So you see, I'm giving you just four examples of truly egregious mistakes that should never continue to happen after nearly four years that track has been initiated. Those are my comments. Like, as I want to reiterate, the, the ride drivers are wonderful. I like them. I get, I've gotten along with them. It, are, it is the schedulers who not only screw up the drivers, they give them a bad name and a bad rap, but it's, it's the ride in general. And I know the ride is the, one of the only things we have. Not unless you're capable of getting on the, the uh, subway system, the trolley, or commuter, and you will be fine. But anyway, that is all I need to say. I thank you for the uh, time. Thank you, Gerard. Um, next. I just uh, want to make sure we don't have uh, next is Sandy Novak. I just wanted to make sure there wasn't anyone who uh, hadn't already spoken yet. All right, go ahead, Sandy. Okay, um, I just want to bring up an equity matter. Um, people who do not rely on the ride um, for transportation, if they get notified by their medical provider that somebody canceled their appointment, which for you frees up some time with the medical provider. They're able to accept that appointment that same day and travel in on the fixed route, for example, um, and, and have their medical appointment. So I want to put a bug in the ride's ear um, that uh, ride customers deserve equity um, and that 
if we were to get offered a same day medical appointment because somebody cancels with the medical provider, that we should be able to jump at the chance to see our medical provider because we've been waiting on a wait list for an opening and be able to um, have a ride vehicle pick us up and get us to that medical appointment. And um, I guess that would mean the ride would have to set aside a certain number of vehicles and drivers just for same day appointments or something along those lines. Um, but we deserve equal access to our medical providers. And in order to have equal access to our medical providers, we have to have equal access to transportation. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. Um, all right, Tom, Tom Gilbert. Hi. Um, I, 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 I have an, an, another question that I, I didn't think to uh, ask earlier. My, um, my, 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 my uh, friend, friends uh, recently had problems with an Uber driver not, 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 not accepting her uh, service dog. And um, they, they were all out denied. And my, my friend Brenda tried calling to, 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 to rectify the issue. And, and, then, and, and I'm not sure who she, who she exactly called, but they said, well, there's nothing we can do about it. It's because, because it's Uber and, and all that. I was just wondering about the necessary channels that maybe Michelle and, and Jeff Gonville could, could tell, tell me how, how she would go about um, just make sure that doesn't happen again. Like, I, I think the driver may have gotten reprimanded. I'm not sure, but, but, it, did, but, she didn't seem, but it didn't seem like she was really too satisfied on the outcome, she, she has a, a a black lab retriever, and and the Uber driver outright de 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 denied her dog. And I was just wondering uh, how how to rectify it, how she would rectify that. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Yeah. Um, Hello. Next, I'm going to call on uh, John Rossi. Hello. Hi, John. Thank you. Thank you very much. I just had to unmute. Um, I live in Lexington. Um, I work in Boston, and most of my health care providers are in Boston. I'm an EMPT. I've been an EMPT for about six years. Um, I'm sure we can all agree that um, I'm sure uh, I keep seeing an unmute sign coming up, so I'm not sure if you can hear me or not. But we can hear you. Oh, great. Thank you, Bill. I'm sure we can all agree that when it comes to accommodating uh, people with disabilities, there's no such thing as one size fits all. And um, my comment is about the more recent um, restructuring of um, the Uber allowances uh, for people that are qualified to use the ride. And I just wanted to suggest that there are, there are many folks um, that may not be able to use the ride because of their time constraints, whether it's as a, as a, as a uh, somebody just recently mentioned, the need to be same day accommodations, or sometimes you need to be in more than one place in the course of an entire day that the ride just uh, because of its waiting times and all doesn't accommodate. So I would ask that you may reconsider the criteria as being correlated simply to how many times people use the ride because I think we've heard today that the ride does fall short of accommodating a lot of folks with disabilities with various needs and to deprive them of the use of the Uber option because they're not using the ride, which isn't servicing them anyways, um, is sort of punitive and uh, falls short of everybody's goals. I know of the fine people in this room or this meeting uh, as well as I'm sure uh, you know, our, our people in Massachusetts in general. So if you could give that some further thought, uh, I would certainly be, uh, be thankful to you. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thank you, John. Um, just, uh, Peter? Hi, thank you. Um, a couple of just quick comments. One of them is uh, to piggyback on the individual that said, they were being left at a, picked up early and dropped off earlier than they needed to be and then left. 
it's my understanding and it's always been since, and I've been on the ride since the seventies, that when you get dropped off and it's way before your drop off time that you requested, the driver just can't leave you. So I'd like some clarification on that because that's egregious. Um, especially if someone's blind and it's not light out yet and they telling you they, have, they don't need to be dropped off at 10, but you decide you're gonna pick them up at 6.30 like that gentleman decided. Well, he shouldn't have to wait. No one should have to wait hours for something to open up when they specifically already explained their drop off time, which they do when they, um, when you call in to reserve the ride. So that definitely needs to be looked at. The other thing is, it used to be that if a passenger was having problems communicating with the dispatch or anybody at the ride, you could call the T and the T would usually resolve that within 30 minutes to an hour. But now when you call, the last time I called to do that, I was told they don't, you know, that, that they just took the complaint and email it and that the issue of course wouldn't be resolved the same day. And that was an issue when a driver couldn't get in touch with dispatch. And so, you know, something needs to be put in place where if you're not able to resolve it with the ride itself, that someone at the T is there to intervene and not, I don't mean days later, I mean that exact same day. That's how it always was until track took over. Then the T changed everything. It's not a good system. So that's just one of the things I, I wanted to point that out. Thank you. You're muted, Jessica. Thanks, Peter. Um, I'm looking at our time. Uh, so I'm going to call in the last uh, couple people here, and then um, I'll turn it over to, to Michelle. Uh, Vinoid? He may not have just taken his hand down. I don't know. Okay. Um, Elizabeth? Oh, oh here he comes. Hi. Hi. You know, I was speaking before. I do not know. My phone, something went wrong. I was not able to hear anything from your side. Did you hear my full comments before? I do not know. Yes, we were able to hear all of your comments. Okay, thank you. Thank right. you. Thanks. Sorry. Um, okay. Elizabeth, do you have a final comment? And then, and then we'll turn it over to Michelle. Uh, sure. Uh, yes, Elizabeth Dean Clower again. Um, uh, I saw in the chat that people were talking about after um, Sandy Novak had explained, you know, had two situations of someone asking why she was using the lift as a standing, per, you know, as someone using a um, a rollator, a, a rolling walker, which was totally, and then about the seatbelt. Um, and, and, and then someone subsequently said about sensitivity training. I think I would even use a stronger word, not only that it should be mandatory or whatever. I don't know if there are, um, when somebody has become a ride driver, if like in other um, kinds of work settings, there's any kind of refresher or whatever that people take, but that um, it's more than just sensitivity, which has that kind of, well, it would be nice, like be friendly. It really, that for especially for different types of disabilities, not only within each category, um, you know, as we've already been discussing, no two situations or people are alike, but you know, that when dealing with people who are blind or low vision, you know, of course that everyone should be announcing who they are, that they're affiliated with the ride, except for the context or with um, uh, mobility devices um, that uh, once again, in the chat, we've already had discussions about the issue with two wheelchairs and that even if, measurements are taken that because certain wheelchairs have to be reclined or foot, uh, um, the foot rests extended, et cetera, that how that spatially works in real life can be different. Um, 
And so I just wanted to, on the training end that you've been hearing multiple times about, you know, very good drivers, I would not only echo that, but that when it's time, this is, uh, we need um, immediate solutions for how to handle some of these problems, but the drivers themselves should also be included on um, the next procurement because they would echo from their side um, as they have to some of us that it's very uncomfortable for them to drive. But very lastly, um, that just as people in real time, if they're using Ride Flex, there is a number you can, you have that driver's number, you can reach the driver. And as you've heard multiple times from Peter and others, that we used to have that capability to reach dispatch to solve your own the problem in real time. Um, and, and that um, continues, there really does need to be some kind of hotline equivalent, um, if not directly to, to the dispatcher, but the fewer people involved, the, the better. But thank you for this opportunity for today. And um, we look forward to the responses. Thanks, Elizabeth. Um, so with that, um, I'm gonna turn it over to, to Michelle. Gina okay. Fitzhauser. I'm, oh, I'm sorry, did I miss, I missed one? Sorry, yeah. I'm sorry, Michelle, one, one more, more. Last question. person, Last uh, person. Gina Fitz. Yeah, uh, how are you doing? Something else my husband didn't mention was when he first applied for the ride, he was denied three times. For um, so my question is, do you have a medical personnel that as assesses the um people that apply? Thank Michelle you. was nodding yes. Yeah. 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 Michelle was nodding. Um. So really, because. They do because he, he literally was denied and that was that one. And the other thing is the times when they have dropped him off late, sometimes he's cut he's cut his session, his dialysis session short, which he shouldn't be doing. Right. So that's that's not good because no. he ends up getting sick. So I hope that's something that can be rectified. Thank you. Thank you, Gina. And I'm mm -hmm. sorry I missed your hand there momentarily. That's okay. It's okay. That's why we're a team. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Michelle. Okay, first of all, thank you. Uh, I appreciate your participation and your feedback, as does the entire team. Uh, and I want you to know uh, th that the team cares and we're doing everything we can. Uh, many of us work around the clock to ensure that the best service we can deliver is provided. That being said, we recognize that there's room for improvement. And some of what I'm hearing, just a couple of general things I'd like to address, and then we'll, we'll make an effort to address each individual concern and follow up with our tag. Uh, the, the comment and concern about drivers and efficient scheduling, I can tell you that our software optimizes our schedules uh, and we always aim to achieve the most efficient scheduling. Uh, that being said, there are a lot of factors uh, that affect how our trips are performed on the day of service. There is a lot of variability. Uh, the most significant impact right now is a combination of the nationwide driver shortage. Uh, we have, we're experiencing significant driver callouts, uh, FMLA leaves, uh, additional factors that can impact uh, the day of service and scheduling efficiencies where we may have to combine trips less optimal are um, late cancellations, no-shows. And I just wanna take a moment here to explain what a no-show is. I think the seasoned customers understand what a no-show is. A no-show is when uh, a driver shows up and the customer doesn't. And that will lead us, and I'll work my way toward communication. Uh, but what that does is the driver remains until he contacts dispatch. And that, that's out of concern for not leaving a customer. Uh, and that's why we have that process in place. Uh, see what else I wanna go into. So late cancellations also impact our ability to schedule efficiency. Um, that's scheduling. Uh, let's see, what was, what else? Oh, communications. A common theme that I'm hearing here today is communications and it's across the board. It's our communications with our customers. It's communications between drivers and customers, cus uh, drivers and dispatch. 
Uh, and uh, we're taking a good look at this uh, and looking for ways to improve. Uh, drilling down into uh, why we have the current structure we do, uh, understanding it, listening to your feedback and then working forward about how to improve that. And that will also include updates to our website and to uh, communications to our customers. Uh, regarding training, oh, I'm sorry, was someone speaking? Okay. Uh, our drivers do receive sensitivity training. And yes, Elizabeth, I do hear you. Uh, they are monitored, uh, their performance is monitored. Uh, we have some quality assurance and quality control. Uh, and when, um, when an issue is identified, they will receive refresher training. Uh, it was disheartening to hear about the rude behavior of the driver uh, that was shared with us tonight. Um, I would encourage you, and I probably should have led with this, that all of these experiences, please ensure that you report them in through the customer service channels so we can capture it, it fully investigate, and then follow up on it and take action uh, when, when able to. Um, Customers with service animals, uh, with Uber and Lyft, that's something we don't tolerate. And again, we ask that you report that into us so we can address it immediately. Uh, I, I haven't been aware of anything that's happened recently, uh, but I appreciate you sharing that uh, feedback with us. Uh, I think at this point, just one other item I'd like to mention, which is that we've been working with RTAG uh, to review our entire customer complaint process. We stepped through the process with RTAG. We've identified areas of concern. We're looking to improve that. I can tell you that uh, I now check customer complaints uh, daily. I, I take a look at what's come in. Uh, and I also am looking to improve our oversight of the complaint process. And we're in discussions internally about how we can do that. And I think at this point, um, I will just mention and then close with, I heard a lot of questions about Ride Flex and can tell you that we're working on um, clarifying some of these questions and we're hoping to post it to our webpage. And we will also follow up uh, again, with our tag on the questions that we've heard here. Uh, lastly, I just want to hit again on no one should ever be concerned about reporting uh, an issue or a concern. And I'll end with thank you for the commendations and the positive feedback that goes a real long way um, to making our, our team uh, feel better and it's rewarding and fulfilling. So thank you. Uh, and I, I'd like to close just again, a final thank you. I'm looking forward to more discussions uh, where we can collaborate and I'm hoping to report out some of the actions we've taken soon. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. That's uh, very important to hear the deep concern, the improvements, and your receptivity to all the uh, challenges that were put forward tonight. And, and, and I also want people to know uh, everything said in the chat will be taken very seriously as well. Jessica? Yes. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. Please know that we are, our tag is, I know our tag, all we have. I think almost all of the members of our subcommittee are here tonight listening, um, as along with members of the executive board. And I know that uh, this information will be used in their advocacy going forward and um, used to help inform where our tag's focus is um, in the next few you months. Know. And clearly, for, we've come some positive distance since November. That doesn't. Yep. That in absolutely no way is to even tamp down any concerns, but there has been some real positive movement, and that's fantastic. Yeah. More to come, we hope. Yes. 
All right. So uh, with that, uh, we can go ahead and end tonight's meeting. Um, thank you everyone for coming and taking time. Thank you. And um, I know it's a long weekend, so I hope everyone has a good weekend. And yeah, thank you very much. Thanks to Jeff as well. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night and a nice weekend. long weekend. Have a good weekend. Mm -hmm.